Welcome to Digital Asset News, like a top stories in crypto. I'm breaking down a bite-sized piece. So just like the thumbnail suggests, September is gonna be a pretty rough month, but there is good news on the horizon. So we're gonna quickly take a look at uh, four years of September and what happened immediately after. I'm also gonna take a look at a couple different stories as far as micro strategy and Mr. Wonderful from Shark Tank. Also some uh, glass node data as far as long-term holders and what they're doing with their Bitcoin. Also uh, a little stock to flow action. And finally, to finish all up, a little story about NFT, Recur, and Fidelity. So today is not a great day. Uh, we're in a little bit in the red. We're at 2.05 trillion. Uh, things are down. Uh, the daily sentiment is a little bit uh, uh, recessed as far as like uh, average, but Bitcoin sentiment is still pretty high because I think that the people who've been here for a long time know what's going to happen in Q4. So real quick, Bitcoin's at uh, almost 45,000. Ethereum is 3,200. Cardano is 2.45 and everything's down across the board except for Polkadot up a whopping 2%. Watch out. And uh, that's really about it. Oh, 11% for Cosmos. Congratulations, Cosmos holders. So really what it comes down to is let's just break into it and see what this good news is because we all know September is going to kind of suck. So to take a look at that, there's these uh, monthly calendars I like to pull it every so often over at TradingView. And just so you know, in the last bull run uh, in 2017, great year, great year, 2017, uh, over here we see this little red uh, monthly count, uh, candle. Yes, we were uh, in a, a bearish month, but ever since after that, actually, uh, in October, November, and December, look at that fantastic wick all the way up. Now, that was in 2017, the last major bull run after the halving in 2016. What happened in 2018? Well, we saw a little bit more of a dip uh, after September. Here it is, but it was uh, winter, uh, bear winter for cryptocurrency. Then we go along a little bit more. And then in 2019, uh, somewhere around here, July, August, September, a red candle, yeah, a green, red, red, green. But then again, in 2020, when we had the halving, uh, look what happened here after September. Green, 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 green. And then what's going to happen usually uh, in the, uh, big bull, the big bull year, which I think is uh, 2021, probably green, green, green. But again, this is not investment opinion, it's just investment advice. This is what has happened in the past. We could be in an elongated state. Maybe we see it uh, in January, February, March. But again, I think Q4 is gonna be, if not the big quarter, a run up to a very big uh, surprise as far as crypto. So that is the uh, 12 uh, years of September. So let's take a look at some, some good news because, uh, you know, it's always good to see what's going on as everything uh, drips down to the red part. So this was a great article. Kevin O'Leary came out and uh, he went through an interview and he had eight quotes from the whole thing. I'm not gonna play the whole uh, interview. So yeah, it's good, but uh, we don't have time for that. Time is money and uh, a lot of things going on. So this is what Kevin O'Leary says from uh, Shark Tank. He goes, look, Ethereum is slow. He says, I find Ethereum as a user, it's too slow. And so there's gonna be other chains that are going to emerge. Uh, another thing he says is that the regulators have pushed back on the Lend product from Coinbase, and that is a slowdown. I totally agree. He says uh, we want the regulators to actually make some decisions about crypto. I, I agree with him here. We want them to make some decisions about crypto. However, what I want, what I would like, is that we all have a voice in what is going on. So to um, help us out and to expedite that process, we actually had uh, done a video yesterday about the SEC and what's going on. They're going to have a hearing between uh, all the senators who are in the banking committee. And uh, we talked about how uh, the honorable, as they call them, I know some people don't like that word honorable, whatever. Uh, Gary Gensler was going to be there. And I talked about do two things. First of all, reach out to your senator who's on that committee. Uh, if you're in those states, I showed you exactly how to do that. And then just write him a quick note uh, or an email or send him a message or, or call them. It doesn't have to be grandiose. Just say, look, Gensler's going to be there tomorrow. I would like you to ask him if there's going to be clarity. We need clarity ASAP. You don't have to make it super long. Just tell him we need clarity and have him put his feet to the fire. For Pete's sakes, he was a uh, uh, professor at MIT and he taught blockchain. There's no reason why we can't get clarity now. There's no reason why he's giving everybody else a pass as opposed to other different types of products. That was the whole video right there. So that would be great if you could do that. And then uh, also to finish up on this one. Uh, if the regulator uh, finally allowed financial services companies to call it an asset, put it into an ETF in the United States, like they have in Canada and other countries, I figured there'd be another one trillion worth of buying into Bitcoin. And I have to agree with Mr. Wonderful here. I think we can squeeze out another one trillion if the people get comfortable with putting it into an ETF. Why can't we just do that? 
doesn't make a lot of sense. It seems like all the other countries are leaving the United States behind. Just do what you were paid to do, government. You'll work for us. And then to finish this up, he states, all the institutions are coming to the conference to discuss this very topic. And apparently there is a SALT conference. Uh, this is going on from yesterday to Wednesday in New York. So when he says all the institutions are coming to the conference, maybe this could gear them all up for Q4 and what is happening in the cryptocurrency. Maybe they can all come up with a great plan, which I believe is this. And uh, I said this in the video yesterday. We can wait for the SEC to do their thing, or we can go on the offensive and just go, you know what, if you're gonna sue us, let's go into court. And there's a lot of money behind crypto and digital assets. If you have a crack in a Coinbase, a Binance, a Gemini, a Voyager, and everybody else and different projects that just come together and go, you wanna, you wanna do this? Let's do this, let's get it out in the open, and uh, let's just go to court and, and go through the whole process. I know some people say it's a bad idea. I think it's a great idea. And uh, Mark Cuban did it and he won in 2013 for insider trading. He beat the SEC like a drum. So the only reason they get away with this nonsense is because of the SEC and they're afraid of him. So go on the offensive, everybody. I think we've got enough money. Cost Mark Cuban $12 million to, to beat them. I think we can do that. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments section and let's move on to our next piece. Oh, and before I forget, uh, we, we're going over a lot of different uh, material today as far as the news. If uh, there's some more news that I think is pretty uh, newsworthy, one of those being uh, fake Litecoin news, lighting things up and some different FUD articles, go over to Alex Maschioli's show and uh, check that out. I watched it, it was pretty good. Uh, what's going on, links in the description and then check that out. All right, so the next piece, uh, as far as good news is this is very quick, is Michael Saylor for MicroStrategy. Uh, MicroStrategy, essentially, they, not essentially, they did this. They purchased uh, an, another 5,000 Bitcoins for 242.9 million. So when we talk about buying the dip, there is no better master of this than Michael Saylor and Michael Strategy. And um, if you're looking for good news about who's buying up and, and big companies getting into the game, there you go, Michael Saylor. So uh, if he can buy the dip, why can't I, which I did this morning with a couple of different things. So uh, and more good news on that point. And on top of that, Let's take a look at some Glassnode data, which uh, this is from Dylan LeClaire. And uh, it's a pretty interesting little graphic, uh, very basic. It says Bitcoin supply held by long-term holders continues to break all-time high. So right here, this little uh, squiggly chart as it goes up. I can't see my mouse, unfortunately. See where it says 60K and the things that are going uh, you know, up and down, up and down. Uh, that is essentially the price. So right here in September, we're looking at around uh, whatever it was, uh, $45,000 or whatnot. But these gold bars right here, these are long-term holders and how they are holding on to Bitcoin. And depending on how um, Glassnode defines, I think it's for people who held it uh, between six months and a year, maybe long-term holders. Look at this mountain of long-term holding. Ever since we had that massive dip uh, back in April and May, people are just holding it waiting for Q4. And that is what is surprising to me. Also, I took a look at Glassnode quickly, and I just wanna take a look at uh, uh, exchange inflow volume versus outflow. And if you bring it over here, uh, you can see that outflow volume is 13,791 uh, for uh, Bitcoin. And I was like, well, and of course, if we see a lot of inflow, that means that people are going to sell potentially. Well, let's take a look at outflow from the exchanges and see how that measures up. So again, we had the uh, 11,931 for the uh, inflow. And for the outflow, people probably going in cold storage, 13,000. Uh, 268 as far as Bitcoin goes. So there's a little bit of positive news. And then what I want, want to take a look at was um, uh, long and short-term holders as far as Glassnode, but uh, my account is limited in what I see. And I pay uh, a monthly account, I have to upgrade that, but it's kind of pricey. It's like 800 bucks a month for Glassnode, kind of crazy. But um, apparently what we're seeing here, like it, uh, we just said over on this way, Long-term holders continue to hold, and that's good news for us. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments section. Seems like it's pretty good. Uh, but on all good notes, let's take a look at the flip side as far as what is going on. And that is stock to flow. So stock to flow, if you don't know the model, uh, pretty basic stuff. And um, what we have here is this was from Plan B on June 20th. Let me blow this up so you can see it. And I always, a good rule of thumb is that models are great until they're not. And that is essentially what it is here. So this is what stock to flow states as far as like price prediction. It goes, 
Uh, there is more a fundamental reason that we see weakness in June and possibly July. My worst case scenario for 2021 is this. August, 47K. All right. September, 43K. Well, we're almost there. October, 63K. November, 98K. December, 135K, which sounds pretty good, right? But let's take a look at August. And he's saying that August, eh, about 47K, right? So if we come back here and we take a look at August. So 47K in August, 2021. Well, not really, because we were at 38,000 here, 37,000 here. So the 48 really doesn't hold true. So does that mean that uh, everything that Stock to Flow says is incorrect? No, a little bit of a hiccup. And uh, there's been different things. But the big thing I want to make mention is that uh, don't put your, your faith into any kind of um, diagram, any kind of data analytics. Uh, there's nobody has a crystal ball and no one can predict everything. So will September be 43K? Yeah, maybe. Uh, maybe it'll go to 40. Heck, maybe go to 38. Nobody knows. But I can tell you this. Uh, if we take a look and just do what uh, my man Diddy says, <laughs> which is when in doubt, zoom out. Just take a look at this chart right here. 2015, Bitcoin's 232. And look at this massive run up in 2017 we were just talking about. Look at that big, huge pump. It wasn't anything. And now look at this. And then back here in 2013, you can't even see the pump. You can't even see it because it's so small. And that, I think, is what, what's going to look at like in 2021 and in 2026 and 2020, whatever else you want to go for. And that is the big thing about crypto and digital assets. All right. Let me know you think about that. And let's move on to some of our last pieces, which is recur and fidelity. So this was a, a quick tweet that I found. It's pretty interesting. Uh, billionaire New York Mets owner Steve Kahn, Cohn, excuse me, led a 50 million investment into NFT platform Recore, which already has collegiate licensing deal. And the whole article can be summed up in just these couple of paragraphs, which is this. Um, Recur recently completed a deal with the Pac-12 conference. If you're not in the United States, that's uh, all for sports, college sports. Recur will create NFTs based on highlights of memorable Pac-12 moments throughout the years. That's a lot of money. The Pac-12's NFT will be part of a new website, nftu.com, that Recur developed that the company hopes will someday house NFTs for every college sport in the U.S. And just to be sure, I took a look at uh, Recur, uh, what it is, and it's not launched yet, but it had a pretty good uh, white paper, and there was two things that I thought was interesting. First of all, to get the white paper, you have to go to the website, sign up for an email, and then they'll let you download it. And it, it's a great resource to figure out what NFTs are. Uh, different kinds and how they're going to fit in. And just so you're wondering, yes, Recur is going to be built on Ethereum. So that is how they're going to do it. And they had this really good chart, which made a lot of sense, which was kind of funny how they did it. But it says valued settle on Ethereum versus transaction fees. And on the right-hand side, you can see here, like, here's the volume of the, of the NFTs. I think that's 0 0.5 trillion, 0 0.1, 1.5, 2.0, and 2.5. Um, and then over here, here's the transaction fees. So yes, we always complain about the transaction fees of Ethereum, but they go, you know what? Those transaction fees aren't worth squat compared to the value of the NFTs of what's going on. And that's how they uh, deride it from it. But in all honesty, if you have invested into any type of platform with NFTs, if you're on uh, Avalanche, Solana, Cardano, any of those ones, Phantom, whatever else, um, I think that's where the money is going to go. And we see things actually go into those platforms because they have NFTs. So when we take a look at this, if we're looking at where the next big play is, that is potentially it. Not financial advice, just financial opinion. And then lastly, to finish this all up, uh, there was a great piece here from Fidelity Digital Assets. And they just did a, a quick study about what is going on in the crypto market from December 2020 to April 2021. It was 1,100 respondents. And just so you know, those were, it was broken between financial advisors, high net worth investors, family offices, pension funds, crypto hedge funds, and so on and so forth. And the barriers to adoption was this. I found this was most, most interesting. 54% of surveyed investors believe that price volatility is one of the greatest barriers to investment. I think that's incorrect. I think the thing as far as volatility goes, that is an asymmetrical return. And that's what you want to see because there is a lot more gains as opposed to putting into some blue chip stock in the S&P 500. Also, 44% of investors surveyed share the lack of fundamentals to gauge appropriate value as a barrier to investment. I don't see why. Just go to danteachescrypto.com. I show you how to do this in module uh, four, reviews. Just go over there. I show you exactly how to uh, evaluate each project with examples. 
They should just do that. Super simple. I mean, for what it is. And then uh, to finish this up, 84% of US and European investors survey indicated they would be interested in institutional investment products. And 27% of US and European investors survey believe real estate has great potential for tokenization, which is a 12 point slide. And the big thing also was that uh, there is a ton of Asian investors and that's who gets into it. So look, that is what's going on, quick down and dirty. Uh, I know there's a lot of things happening, but uh, we try to go quickly. There's so much going on. Again, check out Alex's uh, uh, YouTube channel, a lot of good information over there, and that is it. So if you found value here, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, a like. Um, that is it for today. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks so much. See you on the next one.